Well, it looks like I got another project here at the property. This thwart of the canoe kind of busted out the other day. It, I knew it was getting loose and thinking I just needed to tighten it up, but it, man, it just broke through the wood there. So it's time to take this off and let's, uh, let's get a new one made. So uh, I'll bring you guys along for this. Another unexpected project but I think it'd be kind of a good one. It's it's needed. I'd use this thing quite a bit. Okay, so I've got this off the canoe, just kind of took the bolt out of the other side, but this is the close-up of the side that broke, and you know you can see it kind of punched out of this, the end of the wood, and the underside shows some rot. Looks like you know the water would just sit under there and not really dry off uh, really well, So uh, and maybe the finish was not well as well done underneath. But I, I don't think the wood rotted out so much as I think it probably came loose and when I went to pick it up it kind of started punching out and just kind of you know broke the block out of the the side and then maybe then it started getting rot in there but it actually looks pretty decent wood maybe down in there but it's time to get a new one. I'm not sure what these what type of wood this is made out of but I do have some pine here uh, from a tree we cut down. Just because I have it, I may make it out of this. I'm, I'm going to do a little bit of research. I know it's likely not pine. It's probably something a little stronger. Um, but this is this plank is a little thicker, maybe like by an eighth inch. So I might have to shave it down on the ends to get that original bolt to fit. Well, now that I've got this traced out on the main board, um, I'm going to start cutting it out with the uh, the jigsaw here. And after that, uh, I think we just need to round over the edges uh, over the most most of the the piece but then the very ends they are uh, uh, squared off so let's get to kind of securing this down and cutting it out with the the jigsaw like to clamp this down because the piece likes to move around a lot when you use a jigsaw and I think I'm gonna be a little uh, you know heavy on the line like just making it a little bit long wider than it than it needs to be and then I'll probably sand down to it and kind of clean it up a little bit. Let's get this going. So now that I've got this, this first part cut out, I'm just going to slide this down and do the rest. It's good to not have so much hanging off the edge because it'll, it'll kind of wobble on you when you're doing the jigsaw. And it's not so much that you really have to stay directly on the line that you traced because uh, who's going to know if you were off a little bit. You're just going to just make sure it's a nice sweeping motion. If you get off just a little bit, just kind of correct slowly. Just uh, you, you're going to notice if you kind of were wobbling back and forth trying to maintain your line, uh, you're going to notice that more than if you just were off by a sixteenth of an inch the whole way, something like that. So for, for a piece like this, not so much worried about staying exactly on the line, but just making a, making a nice sweeping motion. So I'm going to go ahead and cut the rest of this out. You know, we'll, I won't bring you along for all of this. So uh, next, after I get it cut out, we'll start sanding. I'm going to start with the 80 grit sandpaper. We're going to do also the top as well to kind of make it nice and smooth and then finish it off with this Doing this, I wanted to give you one other quick tip is that when you're using an orbital sander on the edge of a piece like that, it tends to round over the whole piece. Um, I'm not super worried about that because I'm going to kind of round over the edges anyway. But if you're trying to sand the edges, it's best to have a kind of a bench top sander that has like a barrel sandpaper, and so you can lay it flat and up against it 
so it'll you know something kind of like this so you can be sure that it's a vertical sand I'm, I'm not super worried about it for this um, you know this project but just something for you to to kind of consider if you're doing something a little more of a showpiece versus you know something like this it's gonna be on the canoe all right let's get back to it now that I'm done sanding I went ahead and did the 220 grit after the 80 and it is nice and smooth and put them together they're pretty close I think the original is a little more rounded they do make like little draw knives you can do, use to kind of get this uh, a little more rounded uh, probably quicker than just sanding it but I don't have one so I just went with sanding it pretty good around the edges now it's a little thicker than the original so it's not going to come in too much of a blade like in the middle but on the ends where the screw would have to go through it kind of barely fit the original so I want to kind of take some of the you know some of the thickness off so if you want to try to thin up just this part of the board you know maybe like a 16th or eight maybe a little more than a 16th of an inch it's hard to do that the only thing I could think of at least the tool that I have is using like a bench top sander and what I would do is let me get you so you can see it here um, is turn this on and basically just you know sand it down just a little bit try to hold it level here and uh, that way it'll kind of take off just a little bit and just a hair so I, I don't know we'll see let's try it out Okay, so I don't know if you can see it's a little bit. Let me try to get it sore. You can take it took maybe a sixteenth off, and now I gotta uh, sand this this down a little bit more with like a that two twenty just to make this nice and smooth. And this is I'm taking the notch out of the bottom part of it, so you don't want to take the notch out of the top because water could get up in there and kind of get on the end grain and kind of sit in there and rot the wood from the top. So hopefully on the bottom it's not going to be as big a deal. I'm going to go ahead and do the other side here and uh, be sure it's the same side that you're taking off and then uh, sand it down and we'll get ready to uh, clear coat this thing. Okay now I'm going to put some clear coat on it. I have just a little bit of this left. It's uh, some exterior urethane. Um, I'm probably going to have to go get some more because I'm going to do several coats but it's always good to wipe it down. I got a rag with some water on it just to kind of get all the fine dust off of it all right now that it's wiped down and dried up a little bit I'm going to coat this with this exterior urethane put on just you know nice thin coats and I always like to put something down on top of my workbench because my workbench is kind of nasty so something like this a nice old pair of khakis works well but I'm gonna go ahead and get this coated and then uh, probably actually have to go to the store to buy more. I am just scraping the bottom of this thing now. Um, so probably gonna do several coats. You have to wait several hours in between coats and I'll likely uh, do a little bit of sanding in the middle. We'll see. Okay, so I've got the yoke finished now. Uh, I was able to I uh, get a few coats on this, sand it down with some 400 grit sandpaper, and uh, got it looking pretty good, nice and smooth. So now I'm back at the canoe and the trailer back here, ready to install it. So 
I took the old screws out. I think they're stainless steel and the washers are rusted through so I got some new ones. So now I'm going to just clamp this up here so I can screw a new, new holes into the yoke itself. Okay, <clears throat> well it looks like this, this fits. I'm just gonna, I gotta tighten the, the bolts up and everything, but it's a good width. It's basically, it's right up on the edges here, on the inside. And looks like we're ready to go on our next adventure. 